been 84 years it's been 84 years and I still can see the data flow the subscriptions had never been unsubscribed from and the errors had never been handled properly RxJS was called a high library and it was, it really was. Hi everybody, my name is Janik Klaus Wortmann and I'm your captain for today. I'm a consultant for Evora IT and member of the RxJS core team for the last three years. On top of that, I'm also an Angular GD. In this talk, you're going to learn about the life cycle of an observable, and I will give you a couple of rules to follow to prevent hitting icebergs. Let's talk about the life cycle of an observable. As soon as we subscribe to an observable, we can register three callback functions, one for the next channel, the error channel, and the complete channel. And technically, an observable don't even have to emit one of those, so there might be the occasion that neither an next emission is happening nor error or complete. In case of the next emission, we have to consider that there can be multiple emissions afterwards, right? An observable does or can potentially emit multiple values and complete at a certain point or errors at a certain point. In case of an error, our observable lifecycle ends. The same actually goes for complete and kind of for none as there's nothing happening in this scenario. We now talked a lot about the observable itself and its life cycle, but what you have to consider is also that every single operator in RxJS creates a new observable and therefore they have their own life cycle. And on top of that, it's even more important to realize that every operator reacts to those channels. Every operator handles either the next error or complete channel and some of them even handle multiple. How does this look in real life? Well. Every of those operators, doesn't matter if it's a creation operator or an operator which does an actual value transformation, creates a new observable instance. And in this example, for, uh, if we create a value and emit it over the observable, over the next channel, map and filter react to those properly, as those handle the next emission. If we would have catch error, for example, how we do it here in this example, catch error, just pass through values that are coming from a next emission, but ignores them entirely. So there's nothing happening with the value emission coming from the from operator. But you have to consider that it's passed through catch error to be processed by the filter operator or basically every operator after catch error. The same though goes for errors, right? Catch error is the error operator from RxJS. So every error that happens in an observable pipeline is handled by the catch error operator. And how catch error is working is you're returning a new observable in that function, but this new observable is just triggered in case of an error. It will still return a new observable instance, just the operator itself. And in case of an error, it will replace the old observable the one that arrowed with a new one, which in our case returns 20, uh, 42, and then be able to process by the filter operator. This leads us to our first rule, at catch error at the end of the pipe. This way you can ensure that errors are handled and you don't pass through errors to subscribers and people that are interested in these values. Other than catch error, there's also the possibility that take until might bite you in the ass. So take until basically takes a notifier observable. And as soon as this notifier observable emits 
a notification, the source observer will complete. You still have to consider that even though you have to pass, it, pass an observable into that, take until will still wrap everything in an observable for you that you then subscribe on. This is there to pass through the next error and complete signals. Back to the original topic, the notify observable. Well, we can run, be in a situation where we have operators after take until. For example, merge map. Merge map takes a function that is called every time the source observable emits something and this function then returns a new observable that gets subscribed to. So how does this now affect our problem, uh, our, how does take until now affect merge map if the notifier observable emits a value? For example, the value 42. Well, first of all, as soon as the notifier observable emits something, the source observer completes, right? Therefore, everything until, including the take until, gets completed. Afterwards, merge map creates an observable every time the source function emitted something. For sure not emitted a complete signal, but emitted a next notification. Therefore, the source, the inner observable in merge map is not directly coupled to the completion signal. Therefore, what will happen is that the inner observable still stays subscribed to and is not completed yet. And this is very likely a very unintended behavior. Therefore, the second rule of thumb, in like 99% of every case, you want to add take until as the very last operator in the chain. This way, you ensure that all observables upfront, even in observables, get unsubscribed from. This just does not apply to operators that are applied after take until. In most cases, this is also not a problem. As soon as we are talking about in observables, it becomes a problem. Therefore, rule of thumb that you, you should in general stick to and take until as the last operator. Let's take a deeper look into those inner observables as we already learned about them, or at least slightly talked about them earlier with take until. So every time you're using merge map, concat map, exhaust map, switch map, all of those take a function that with every emission create a new observable, more or less at least. Depending on the behavior, this might switch slide or might be different, at least a little bit. But all of them have in common that this inner function creates a new observable, a so-called inner observable. For this talk, it does not matter which operator we are talking about. For making it a little bit easier, let's assume we are now just talking about merge map. So how will merge map work? For example, the source observable generates a value 42. The function, the inner function is called with the value 42 and it creates a new observable. This new observable is then tied to the life cycle of the observable that was already re returned earlier. This is already subscribed from to by the any operator, by any operator afterwards. So in case of an error on the source observable, this is now really interesting. In case of an error, merge map will not be in, triggered at all. It won't be, if, there's no way you can handle an error on the source observable inside merge map. That's what you have other operators for like catch error, for example. But what still happens is that merge map will pass through this error so that other operators can take care of that, namely catch error. Complete is a lot more different. Complete will be, won't, actually won't be passed through. Why is that the case? Well, a complete on the source observable does not mean that the inner observable complete or is completed yet. <clears throat> so imagine every emission created a new inner observable. Just because the inner observable, uh, the source observable completed doesn't mean necessarily that the inner observable is completed too. It very likely isn't actually. 
just the combination of inner observable completed and source observable completed will lead to the fact that the outer observable, so everything after merge mode, will also get a complete signal. Though, if we have a complete signal on the inner observable, it also not, not, does not necessarily mean that the outer observable is complete. Just the combination of two will guarantee that their merge map won't be called again and therefore no new value will be generated. Therefore, it will, can say, safely assume, okay, now we are complete entirely. Error again behaves differently here. An error signal on the inner observable will be propagated. The same as errors in JavaScript are propagated and therefore handled as soon as you, like always to the next instance, it's the same with observables. So if the inner observable throws an error, it will be emitted on the outer observable. And what happens if the outer observable gets an error? Exactly, the whole observable completes. It's not complete, but it ends. So therefore, what we should always do when we're talking about inner observable is placing a catch error on the inner observable. This way, we are guaranteeing that errors that are happening inside the merge map are catched. We are returning a new observable instance, and this way our operators afterwards can continue working. This is also a very good practice if you know you have a process that commonly throws an error for whatever reason or might easily fail. Wrap it inside merge map or any other of those map operators, and this way you can handle those errors dedicatedly to those operations and con still ensure that every kind of procession will continue. We will take a look into this in source code later on. But this exactly leads us to the third rule, add catch error at the end of an inner observable. And this also goes for NGRX effects, for example. Even though since NGRX 8 they have the resubscribe on error behavior, if you add a catch error at the very end of that, you don't throw an error off anymore, right? So be careful with how you're placing error operators and how you're catching those. And this actually already leads, leads me to the fourth and last rule, consider the life cycle of an observable and particularly consider the life cycle of an inner observable. This way you will ensure that your observable will behave correctly and also your logic is according to what you thought of. Let's take a look at some code. To demonstrate this, I wrote a piece of code here that uses interval to tick every segment, therefore simula simulate an observable that generates multiple values over time. I then combined this with merge map for now just to create a new observable with the same value. And in case my source observable completed or errored, I have finalized here to print in the console. So what would now happen if my inner observable inside here throws an error? Let's take a look. So in case, for example, if E is equal to two, I will return throw error. And throw error here is an observable that emits just an error. So what will now happen is we're printing zero and one, and then I'm completed. And even though interval could still be ticking, because we propagate this error to the outer observable, the whole observable died, because this is basically an unhandled error, and therefore it would be propagated. What we could now do is um, a couple different things. So for example, we could wrap this whole thing in defer, return defer, just to have a closure around it. Dun, dun, dun. We put move this here, and now we can call catch error on this. When I call catch error, what will happen now is I say, okay, uh, in case of an error, return of two, as we know in our situation, well, 
the error is emitted when we get the value two. Um, what will now happen though is that this error is catched, we replace it with that observable, and then the next time interval ticks, we create a new observable here again. And therefore we have to call, catch this error and mitigate that problem. How would this now work in case of a completion? This is actually already shown here as off will just emit this and then completes immediately. Sa having that said, we didn't saw finalized be triggered by the complete signal, just by the cap, by the error signal. And for this to work, the source observable and the inobservable have to complete. How we can, can we achieve this? For example, by using one of the completion operators, for example, take. And so now I'm saying take five. And now we should see the handled error here, three, four, and now it's completed due to the completion signal, due to the completion of the source observable and the inner observable as of will emit the value and then completes immediately afterwards. Let's give a quick summary of what we just went through. The first rule is add catch error at the end of a pipe. This way you're ensuring that subscribers will be notified correctly, other operators later on will behave properly and so on and so forth. General rule of thumb, at, if you want to place a catch error somewhere, do it at the very end. Second rule, take until. Take until will just uh, complete the source observable. Therefore, operators afterwards won't be completed. Therefore, what you want to do is add take until as the very last operator in your pipe. When we're talking about inner observables, we have to remember the third rule that we want to place catch error at the end of an inner observable to ensure that errors inside an inner observable are catched and not propagate to the outer observable. And probably the most important rule is always think of the life cycle of, 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 of observables to ensure that your business logic is behaving properly. By keeping those four rules in mind, you will ensure that you rather feel like the king of the world instead of struggling getting on a door where it definitely is enough space for a second person instead of letting them die. Thank you very much.